let's look at two dividend stocks that may be undervalued and at a discount right now. As always, this is not financial advice and please do your own research. The first one to make it onto our list is Jupiter Fund Management, ticker symbol JUP. And one of you guys that watched me actually left this in the comments of a previous video for me to have a look at, so thank you very much. Jupiter Fund Management is a well-respected investment firm with expertise in investing in a variety of different asset classes. And it has a strong commitment to risk adjusted returns for its clients. So I'm just on their about section of their website and we can see here that they say, Jupiter is a specialist high conviction active asset manager we exist to help our clients achieve their long-term investment objectives. They've also said that our latest investment outlook brings together expert views and analysis from our top fund managers as they look ahead to the opportunities and challenges in 2023. So let's start to dive a little bit deeper into this stock and see if we think it's worth investing into. This fund is actually listed on the FTSE 250 um, and they're a dividend paying company, of course, otherwise they wouldn't feature in this video. And they pay, their, they pay their dividends twice a year. So an interim payment and a final payment. Their dividend yield is actually extremely high. You can see here 12.9%, which is one of the highest dividend yield across the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 200. There's not very many companies that actually have a higher yield than this. There are a few, don't get me wrong, but this is one of the, you know, the one of the ones that is, has the highest yield. And normally... This would make me think, right, why why have they got such a high yield? Are they trying to lure investors in? Just take note when something has such a high yield. But it's interesting with this company because when you start to look into this a little bit deeper and look at their annual dividends over time, they have actually been able to increase their dividends and sustain it for quite a long period. You can see this graphically here, but also if we scroll down, you can see that since 2012, they've increased their dividends every single year. And that's quite a crazy achievement, really, considering how high their dividend yield is. But this also does make me think, how long are they going to be able to actually carry on increasing this dividend yield when it already sits at one of the highest that I've seen? I've got some interesting information to share about that in a bit. So let's just see how much 100 shares of this fund would actually cost. Okay, so it would cost £132.80. And if we were looking at the last two payments, there was an interim payment of £7.90 and a final payment of £9.20. And you can see here as well, they have paid final special payments as well. So these aren't the ones that are guaranteed. Um, they're the ones that they will just announce and then they will pay their special dividend payment. So we know that they've been increasing their dividend. We know that their dividend yield is really, really high. But let's just see how this fund has actually been performing. Because in order to make it onto this video today, it has to be a it has to be a stock or a fund that is actually not doing so well right now. And it may be of a discounted opportunity. So over the past one month, they're up, but they're up by 3.69%. If we go to six months, we can see that the picture's a little bit different. They're down by four and a half percent. One year, they're down. This is where it gets very interesting. One year, they're down by nearly 50%. Five years is... A crazy picture they're down by 79 percent and if we max it out here we can see how much this stock has actually been decreasing over the past few years especially when you look at their performance over the past one year you can see that they were trading for 265 on the 4th of january 2022 and now you can see that that's pretty much halved it's now 133.65 so the stock price has halved in just a year and that isn't even the lowest point. Look, if you come here and here, you can see that it went way less than half of the stock price that it was at the beginning of the year. Or I should say beginning of last year, actually. We're in a new year now. So Jupiter has maintained its large dividend and they've managed to maintain this for a while, but their stock performance hasn't been very good. And I think it's unlikely that this high dividend is actually going to be sustainable moving forward. So right now we saw that the yield sits at a whopping 12.9%, but last year they actually got new management. And this new management announced that they're going to be changing their dividend policy from 2023 onwards. And this is actually going to end up lowering the dividend and just making it more sustainable and making the company more financially stable in general, which I think is a good thing for the company long term. You know, this is very shallow analysis, 
but I just don't feel like 12.9% and growing is going to be sustainable when clearly the stock price isn't doing very well. There's We'll look at the financials in a little bit and, and we'll see what that, those, those are doing. But yeah, I do think that that's a good thing, even though, you know, a, a nice high dividend, yeah, it seems nice, but you want it to be sustained over the long run. You don't want to invest into a company as a dividend investor and then, you know, in a year's time, they cut their dividends and suddenly that is not a trusted income source that you're getting from your portfolio. For me, I would rather it be lower and sustainable and growing over time. One thing about this company um, that I would really like to point out is that it's actually seen billions of pounds in asset under management leave the business over the past year. And that's really bad news for revenue and profit. They have started a 10 million pound share buyback scheme, which could also be a good thing but of course we'll see how that pans out over time just a couple more things to point out and then we'll jump into their financials so in 2020 they acquired the rival company one of their biggest competitors uh, Mirian global investors and that acquirement acquirement <laughs> that acquisition English language um cost cost like 390 million which is a lot of money and since they made the acquisition you know, their performance has continued to decrease. So I think that begs the question of was that acquisition worth it? Um, And will we see that being worth it in the future? Or is it going to be, you know, quite a big liability for the company, perhaps something to think about. So I think it does seem that this company, yeah, they have a lot to offer. But there are also some risks involved that you may want to evaluate before deciding. So let's just have a look at their financials. And we'll just do this on Yahoo Finance. We won't look at their um, annual report or anything in depth. We'll just look at it at a very base level for the sake of this video not being, you know, an hour long. Oh, another thing actually about this company. When I was doing my research about them, they do have quite a strong brand and quite strong like client uh, loyalty. So that's always a good thing to see as well. These ads are so annoying. Uh, Right, let's just look at their income statement. So we can see that from 2019 to 2020 to 2021, their total revenue has increased year on year. Gross profit has done a similar thing, increasing every single year, but their total operating expenses has also increased. I think one thing that I like to see at a very overview level is that their net income and revenue has actually increased, which is just a small indicator that the company is actually making money. I won't go through every single thing on here, but feel free to just pause the video and have a little look at um, this if you want to. Net income again has seen, it saw a decrease between these two years, but then an increase to 2021. Um, And let me just go onto the balance sheet now. So balance sheets are really interesting. There's quite a few things I could point out here, but what I did want to point out is there is, where is it, where is it? There is a little bit of long-term debt here. Okay, so let's now jump to the cash flow. I always love to look at the free cash flow. It's always at the bottom on Yahoo. Okay, so free cash flow. Let's see what's going on. So the free cash flow actually decreased between 19 and 20, but then it increased by quite a substantial amount between 20 and 21. And when the free cash flow is positive, that's a good thing for us for a start. But also when it's growing, it just indicates that the company is able to generate more cash um, than it's using to actually run the business. And then hopefully that is then being reinvested to grow the business moving forward. Okay, you can also come to this summary page on Yahoo Finance and see a few more little bits and bobs. So their PE ratio, and this is the trailing 12 month PE ratio, you can always, you could also get forward PE ratios. Um, There's a few different ones that you can get. So just know which one you're looking at before you start using that to analyze a stock. But you can see that it's sitting around six here. So what we're going to do with this just quickly is we're going to find one of this company's main competitors, which is Lion Lion Trust Asset Management. So let's just get that one up and let's see what their PE ratio is. Okay, so their PE ratio, again, trailing 12 months, comes in at just over 15. So there's way more to be said with PE ratios, but just at a very, very high level here. Please don't only look at this. You could say that the PE ratio for Jupiter is lower, so it could suggest that it's undervalued right now. Could. Watch my language here. I'm not trying to say that because the PE ratio is lower, therefore it's a great investment and you should all go and buy it. No way. This is a very overview level. It's a YouTube video. It's fun. You know, this is fun for me to do. 
And I hope, if anything, this just allows you to maybe go and start looking at your own stocks or, you know, you think, oh, I've not heard of Jupiter before. I'll go and look at them. That's all I really hope from these videos. So that was the first company, Jupiter Fund Management. Let me know if you have that one in the comments below. And now we're gonna move on to the second company, which I'm sure you have all heard of. Anyone in the UK listening and watching this video right now, I'm sure you've heard of this next one. It's not one I've spoken about on this channel before. So if you wanna leave your guesses in the comments below before you hear what it is, do that right now. Um, but it is right move. Ticker symbol RMV. And it doesn't need any introduction, but Rightmove is featured on the FTSE 100 and they run the largest online real estate portal. By the way, guys, I've recently started a Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description below, but definitely check it out. It's gonna be super exciting. I'm really building a community over there. I'll be chatting to my Patreons on Discord every single day. I'll be releasing everything I'm doing in my own portfolio. It's gonna be live. Uh, the top tier get shout outs in videos, they get free dividend trackers, so much more, go and check it out. So back to right move again, like Jupiter, they are paying twice a year, an interim payment and a final payment. Their dividend yield is not as crazy as we just saw. It's coming in at 2.2%, which for me, it's a little bit more relieving to see. Um, ideally, I quite like to see dividend yields about between four and six, because I feel like that's quite a sweet spot but there's way more to it, isn't there? You've, you've got to look at more than just that. Looking at their annual dividends, this is really interesting. So 2011 to 2017, they were on um, a really good growth track. We can see this here. This is what we love to see with dividend growth investing. They were able to increase year on year by quite a nice amount. In 2017, this dividend then dropped right here and then it dropped again in 19. And since 19, they have been steadily increasing it but it's not up to the levels, of course, that it was in 2017. And we can scroll down like always and, and view that in, in more depth here. Going over to see how much 100 shares would cost us. Let's have a look. Half a grand, £511.40. And with that low dividend yield, I say low, with that relatively low dividend yield, you're getting a between 330 and 480 as the dividend payments based on last year. And now let's dive in to their stock performance. So five days down 2.43, one month down by 8.63, six months, it just worsens, <laughs> uh, 9.11 year to date, no data, we'll skip that one. One year, of course year to date would be no data. We're like one day in. It's the second as I'm recording this. Why didn't I pick up on that? One year down by 35%. Five years is when it starts to, you know, come up a little bit, up 12.65. And then we can obviously max it out here. And what we can see actually is this, this company, Rightmove, they've had quite a nice growth track, really. It's only been, I mean, obviously there's peaks and troughs here all the time, but they did definitely take a knock in 2020, massive decrease here. And then they take, they've they taken another knock since 2021 and they've been falling. Right now, let's just go back to a year. We can see that the stock price has been slashed here. And if, you, if it's one that you want exposure to, it could be a nice opportunity to buy right now. One thing I will say is that even though they've had an absolutely awful year, like you can, you can see it in front of you here, they have actually been buying back shares, which is often a good sign for a company depending on what their buyback reason is and their general financial health as a whole. Like I was saying at the beginning of this video, Rightmove is a company that we all know in the UK. They are really, really leading in their field. They've got an insane market share of like 84%, which is kind of like Google in a way. Google has a market share of above 90. If you're looking for a property in the UK, you're usually always going to go to the Rightmove website and you're gonna check what they've got on their website as listings. For me, it's often been the first place that I'll go if I'm looking to rent a new property or I just wanna see the market prices. And again, if you're trying to sell a property or you're trying to rent a property, where do you normally want that property listed? Right move. And I think this is really, really powerful. They've clearly got a lot of market share, like we just said, and they've got a moat. People are using Right Move. So why have they been doing so badly? I've just banged on about how 
you know, how they've got such a big market share and people know of Right Move, but clearly, just by looking at the performance, they've not been doing well. And I think this is partly due to the increased interest rates because they're likely to reduce the mortgage demand and cause just the UK property market to slow, which we've really been seeing. The UK property market has been hit hard recently. But maybe we'll see this start to recover. And when it does, and the housing market enters a bull market, I'm sure right move will reflect that. And I'm sure right move will start to soar again. So anyway, let's look at their financials. So we saw a decrease in their total revenue between 19 and 20. But between 20 and 21, there was a very, very large increase in their total revenue. We can see with their net income, it's pretty much the same picture as we've just said with their revenue. And then if we go to their balance sheet, one thing I really wanted to point out, and you'll you'll start to see this as I scroll through their balance sheet, is that they have a really high amount in cash compared to what they do in debt. So should they want to, they could really easily afford just to pay off their debt, which I like to see. So you can see here some information on their total liabilities. Um, you can see some information on their total assets. All very interesting. All should be looked at when you're analyzing a company. Um, but another thing that I wanted to point out about Right Move. Again, we don't have time to look into this, so I'm trying to point out the main things I found found when I did my bigger research. By the way, on Patreon, actually, I'm going to be sharing like my market research and what I'm doing in real time within the Discord. So that's going to be fun because I love speaking to you guys about this stuff. I don't have many people in my real life that love investing and doing this stock analysis like I do. So I'm going to build a community elsewhere. Anyway, 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 what was I saying? Um, right move. They don't really need a lot of capital to grow. They're an online business. They don't have many outgoing costs. And the company's earnings earnings per share have been growing at around 6.5% every year on average, which I love to see. They have an operating margin of a very high 73-ish percent. So it's cheap to run and they have a high profitability. Now looking at their cash flow, we can see their net income has increased in the last year. We can see some information about stock-based um, compensation. So how th this is about like stocks that they're giving their sh uh, staff and things like that. Um, acquisitions, they've not made any by the looks of it, et cetera, et cetera. Da, 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 da. Free cash flow. Love to see a company with a lot of free cash flow. And yeah, we can see this. They've taken a hit, but then they've really knuckled down on their free cash flow. They've gone from 92 to 194 which is quite impressive, I would say. I've produced quite a number of these videos and I do them every single month and I'm gonna continue to do so because they're fun and I think you guys like them. But do let me know, do you want me to start including some perhaps US stocks in these as well instead of just UK dividend stocks? Or do you want me to maybe stick to the FTSE 100, FTSE 250, maybe even FTSE 350? Let me know what your thoughts are on that one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.